Welcome. I'm Dr. Nancy Hurtado Zayola, the chair of the SACNAS Nominations Committee, and along with Ms. Marilu Chavez Leva, the co host of today's informational webinar, we will be bringing you information about the Board of Directors nominations. Before I present today's panelists, let me tell you a little bit about our unique organization. SACNAS is a national society with more than 44 year history of fostering the success of Chicano, Hispanic, and Native American scientists and students in attaining advanced degrees, careers, positions of leadership, and increasing diversity in the scientific workforce and academia. And because um, of its inclusivity, SACNAS currently serves a community of about 20,000 members made up of students, professionals, partners, and affiliates from STEM disciplines, institutions, and from many different ethnic backgrounds. SACNAS hosts at, at 115 colleges, chapters, at university campuses, and other organizations that include professional chapters throughout the United States and its territories. And each year, SACNAS brings together nearly 4,000 students, postdocs, professional scientists, administrators, and program directors to its national conference, which this year will be in San Antonio, Texas. Today, we are here to tell you about the Board of Directors, which is the governing body of this large scientific organization. Each year, one third of the board is elected by the membership. On hand, we have current and former board members who will cover as the panelists, the individual and group responsibilities of the SACNAS Board of Directors. It includes general board responsibilities and the expectations of individual board members. Furthermore, we will cover which board positions are available, the criteria and expectations of each of these elected to serve on the SACNAS Board of Directors, and our panel members will share their experience with you. Towards the end of the webinar, we will cover the application and the election process and finally, our panelists will answer questions about um, the questions that were submitted prior to today's webinar. So the board nominations um, portal actually opened on May 1st, and that will remain open until July 27th. So anyone who's interested has the opportunity to submit an application all the way through July 27th. Let me tell you, since I'm the chair of the uh, nominations committee, the role of the nominations committee, it is twofold. Essentially, the nominations committee gathers and reviews and discusses the applications for the nominations. And from that, the committee then recommends a slate of nominees for the board of directors to consider. If the board of directors agree, then that slate becomes the nominees for the board of directors that will be voted on by the membership. Okay, now let me introduce you to the panelists and we will go in, in order and each panelist will um, tell you a little bit about who they are, uh, where they work and why they are serving on the uh, SACNAS board of directors. And I'd like to begin with Dr. Helani Chang. She's um, a board member uh, and actually is a two-time board member. Dr. Chang, if you can please introduce yourself. Uh, thank you, Nancy. I appreciate you inviting me to be a part of this um, important webinar. Uh, yes, I'm Heilani Chang. I am of um, Native Hawaiian and Chinese ancestry. I'm, I was born and raised in um, Honolulu, Hawaii on the island of Oahu. I'm a research faculty at the University of Hawaii at Manoa in the School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology. How did I get involved with SACNIS? Well, I'm the previous IMSD MARC program director, and I would travel every year with my Native Hawaiian students and Pacific Islander students to the annual Abercam conference. Uh, one year, my colleague, who was also the SACNIS president, invited us to also attend the SACNIS meeting the following year. We had never done that before. Um, I liked everything she described about the conference. And so the following year, we, we did show up at the SACNIS conference. And I have to tell you, everything just connected for us. Um, we've, we felt included, we felt welcomed, and we felt that this was a rigorous science conference that also accepted our cultural diversity and our, our voices. Um, we've, we felt accepted and we felt like we were at home, a, a home conference for us. So we've been attending SACNIS ever since then. 
Now, my first term on the board of directors was back in 2003. I served two consecutive terms. Um, back then, I would say the, I thought the uh, focus for the board was inward, was on um, developing or, or, or increasing the membership, the undergraduate students and the graduate students attending the conference. Um, and how did SACNAS do that? Well, they beefed up and increased the number of student travel awards to the conference. They, um, they added more uh, professional development um, panels and they expanded the mentoring opportunities like, that con like the conversation with scientists. So that was a focus I thought was inward. Now here we are in 2017, 2018, and I think the focus um, on the board is, is more outward of, of softness, establishing our national voice. I have to tell you, I'm very proud and I was very inspired by the number of members uh, um, from, on SACNIS, from SACNIS, who took key um, roles as speakers and organizers for the March for Science event. That was incredible, nationally incredible. Um, what else? I, SACNIS, I, I see that SACNIS takes a, a role, a strong role in supporting um, women in scientific workforce. I, we stand for diversity in the STEM work, um, STEM fields, especially always bringing to the table uh, different viewpoints and accepting that and um, accepting different perspectives because from this new knowledge comes innovation. Uh, let's see. I think we are shining a light on untapped potential and creativity among our diverse voices. And then my last um, comment, uh, why am I on the board now? Well, I serve as a SACNIS chapter advisor at my home institute. And my participation on the board was really about motivating and inspiring my chapter members to seek or serve at the national level while representing our home state. Thanks. Nancy, we, you're muted. All right, thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Chang. Next we have Dr. Corey Garza. If he could um, please go ahead and introduce himself. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Corey Garza. I'm a Associate Professor of Marine Science at California State University of Monterey Bay. And this is uh, my first year uh, on the board. I've been on the boarding about six, seven months now, so I'm pretty new uh, to all of this. Yeah, I've been involved with SACNAS uh, since roughly about 2004 when I was a postdoctoral uh, scientist at Cal State Los Angeles. And I first got involved uh, as part of a team that was asked to develop an ocean science program uh, at the conference. And you know, one of the things that we started to learn back then is that, you know, there were a number of students who were looking for different avenues uh, in terms of academic and career pathways in the sciences beyond traditionally what had been presented to them. Um, you know, for me, it was biomedical science that got presented to me, you know, early on. And so I, I eventually got into things like ecology and ocean science. And so we started to see students early on that wanted to do the same thing, you know, at SACNAS and they needed mentors, you know, mentors who in a sense look like them and have the same experiences at them in fields who, and that they weren't familiar with. And so, you know, we were able to help provide that to where today we now have a pretty well sort of established presence at the conference where we can start to engage students who, you know, who don't know the different possibilities that they can pursue, you know, as a student and, you know, professional in the sciences. And that's what I really see as the power, you know, of SACNAS. It's not just helping provide, you know, ideal role models for students, but role models who can help guide students to a diversity of opportunities. Um, that are out there for them. And so, you know, what I really see is sort of my role on the board, it's really helping um, SACNAS kind of develop sort of a diversity of sort of activities that students can engage in, not just to help them develop you know, professionally, but also help them sort of understand and explore the different opportunities and fields that are out there for them to pursue from things like engineering, computer science, mathematics, and physics. You know, there's a whole realm of opportunities out there that students don't always pursue they're not always aware of it. I think as a board member, that's one of the critical activities that you can engage in, you know, when serving. It's really helping to build out the diversity of not just people who come to SACNAS, but the diversity of sort of programs and disciplines that people engage with at SACNAS. Thank you, Dr. Garza. And um, finally, we have um, soon-to-be Dr. Daniel Lujan. He's our graduate student board member, and I'd like him to go ahead and introduce himself. Hello, my name is Daniel Albino Lujan. Um, I'm a graduate student at the University of New Mexico uh, in the Biomedical Sciences graduate program. 
Um, I first became involved in Sockness in 2011 when I attended the conference as an undergrad um, as part of the MARC program. Um, and since then, I, I haven't really missed the conference um, aside from my first year of graduate school, which I wasn't able to attend. Um, I first became interested in serving on the Sockness Board of Directors when I was nominated by a fellow mentor um, in the IMSD program, which I was a part of as a graduate student. Um, you know, I. I went in and I looked in into what the responsibilities were and, and what the term would be. And I became interested in doing that. And uh, my role on the board is, so I'm one of two graduate student members. Um, I see myself as sort of a, you know, a team player first, first and foremost. Um, but I also serve on several committees. I serve on the nominations committee. And I also serve on the uh, Distinguished Awards Committee, and then as well as the Editorial Advisory Board, which uh, we help um, come up with stories for uh, the STEM and Culture Chronicle that Sockness runs. Um, let's see. Um, I research is involved in RNA biology, immunology, as well as breast cancer biology, so sort of an intersectional project. And that's, that's me. Thank you. Um, so I already told you that my name is Dr. Nancy Ortado Zayola, and um, I was I served on the board of directors um, in uh, back in two, between 2010 to 2012. So I'm a former board member, but I became a member of SACNAS when I was an undergraduate, still as an undergraduate, and um, it was my biochemistry professor who told us about SACNAS. We went to our first meeting and uh, I knew I was home. I, I knew that I had to be part of this organization from the get-go. And then once I uh, finished graduate school, I, that's, that was about the time that they um, began the um, Summer Leadership Institute with the AAAS. And um, I had the opportunity to apply to that. And at that point, I knew this organization was, was something that, that was wonderful and and more people had to hear about it and the, what, the way that I felt that I could give back was by serving on the board of directors and so I did and ever since then ever since I first got involved I've been involved with SACNAS in some way shape or form uh, in any way that I could and who knows maybe sometime in the future I may choose to run again but not now <laughs> because right now life is quite full so um, you have all of us as well as um, a staff member uh, Ms. Uh, Marilu Chavez, uh, who will be talking with all of us about what it takes to not just apply, but to be on the board of directors and the, and the level of commitment and how much time it takes. So let us move forward with uh, this webinar and um, we'll hear from each one of our panelists and they'll tell you about their experience and what they've come to learn through this experience so far. Every year, every time there's an election, we have a, about one third of the positions to fill. And so this year we have three general member positions that will need to be filled and one graduate student member position that needs to be filled. Now, recently there was a change in the, um, in the policy for um, the length of term for graduate students. Um, Danielle, if you could go ahead and talk about um, the change in that policy and how it came about. Sure. So um, the recent change is that so formerly graduate students would serve um, two years. And the anybody that it would be coming on during this term and going forward would have an optional third year to serve on the board of directors. And part of the reason that that came about was so that uh, graduate student members have always been sort of looked at as equal board members, um, even though in title we are the graduate student representatives, um, we are full board members. Um, and so part of that is just to sort of reflect that sentiment toward graduate student members that we are full board members and we have the same uh, sort of term as um, professional board members. Okay, thank you. So let's go on and you're up next again. So right now what we're gonna cover are candidate criteria and expectations. And we're gonna see from each one of the panelists their experience and um, Daniel will be talking about membership uh, and experience and his, um, 
um, what he's gone through since he's been on the board of directors, serving on the board of directors. So, Daniel? So for candidate criteria, okay, so for the membership, um, for professional members that would be applying, uh, running for the board of directors as professionals, um, uh, it is expected that you have been a SACNAS member for a long time. Um, and ideally you would have served on some committees. Now, as far as experience goes, um, experience, you know, I think would jump out more if it was involved in committees through SACNAS, but also um, other activities at the conference, such as, you know, serving as a mentor during our mentor workshops that we have. Um, and then also just mentoring in general. I mean, do you as a candidate reflect what SACNAS represents um, at your home institution and, you know, at other societies as well? For graduate students, um, it is expected that you are a SACNAS member and that you do have some sort of experience that fits what SACNAS reflects as well. Um, fundraising experience is good for both professional and graduate student members um, and also I think mentoring experience is great. And I think it would help if you have an experience serving on some sort of a panel or um, working in teams professionally, because that is a big part of what uh, the board represents and what your responsibilities and what's expected of you. Okay. Um, would you, do you have anything to say about the, the time, the amount of time and your commitment to? Oh yeah, definitely. So, for the amount of time expected. So of course, you know about the term length, but um, I would say at a minimum, uh, the board of directors, we do have either a 60 minute meeting per month. Sometimes that's in person. Sometimes that's over teleconferencing. Um, we either have a 60 minute one of those or a 90 minute. And so I think minimum you'd want to at least tack on another um, hour to that so that way you are prepared, you read all the items on the agenda and you come to the meeting essentially prepared to discuss those. Um, in addition to that, as a board member, you are expected to serve on two to three committees. Um, and so those um, vary drastically in their uh, amount of time commitment. Uh, some of them, such as the uh, Distinguished Awards Committee, get really busy over the summer and sort of early fall before the conference starts because that's when our sort of like hot season or busy season is. Uh, nominations committee is also like that and so we have sort of a busy season where we are trying to recruit and then review um, applications to put together the slate for the candidate elections. Uh, one more question for you Daniel. Um, are the board of directors members also expected to serve on at least one executive committee? So as far as, so for executive committees, it's not required of all board members. Um, but I think for definitely not uh, the graduate student members, but the more, you know, tenured board members and also the, or I guess just tenured SACNistas really that are on the board. And then um, if you are elected to sort of an executive sort of position, whether that be the treasurer or if you are the past, or, or if you are the president-elect, or um, any of those executive positions that are on the board, you are expected to serve on the executive committee. Okay, thank you. And, aha, okay, next. Uh, we're gonna hear from Dr. Cory Garza about uh, leadership and his experience with the SACNAS board. I, uh, yeah, happy to speak about this. So, you know, I think being on the board, you know, I think one of the requirements being on the board is having some experience with leadership, um, you know, both at your institution, but also it's helpful if you have leadership in other types of organizations such as SACNA, so the professional societies. And so, you know, on my own sort of experience, to give you some background, so I run a couple of national research centers here on, on my campus. So one's a, a National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration funded center where I have oversight of about four staff and we have something about 26 students, you know, just in our, running through our campus right now. And this is a collaborative effort with about five other institutions across the U.S. And so I'm not just working internally on my own campus, but I'm also working nationally, you know, with five other principal investigators on a pretty large project, then also sort of collaborating with federal agency representatives. And so being able to navigate that has actually been a really good experience uh, for me. 
you know, and then just internally, I also run, you know, NSF sort of REU programs as well. And so there, you know, I'm managing sort of our local consortium here in Monterey Bay of local researchers and the students that they work with. And again, you know, I'm having to sort of manage, you know, different students, you know, personalities, you know, as well as sort of the needs of different groups of individuals here as well. And so those are going to vary. And so really understanding, you know, what different people need, you know, to help them achieve their goals is pretty key sort of component here and understanding how to lead people toward those goals, you know, sort of a key aspect that you want to be able to bring into something like this. You know, and then I'm currently, you know, my own experience with other organizations besides SACNAS, you know, I served on the secretariat uh, for a sort of a West Coast marine science uh, organization called Western Society of Naturalists. And so, you know, for three years, I was part of organizing that conference every year, you know, setting up sort of the meetings, the schedules, you know, figuring out the budget, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, funding students. And so, you know, there's a lot of management that went in that. And then currently, you know, I'm sitting on the science committee for another large national organization called the Coastal and Estuarine Research, you know, Federation. So it's a biennial conference, you know, that has about, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 people that show up. So it's about half the size of a SACNAS conference, but still pretty sizable. Right, again, they were managing logistics, again, different personalities, you know, and different needs. And so, you know, having leadership capacity where you know how to lead both sort of within your or own organization, but also at sort of a national and sort of regional scale is also quite useful because that's really what Stockness, you know, needs to do. You know, we have sort of our own needs within the, you know, the organization with our members, but then, you know, as Stockness is starting to grow, we need to really start to think about how do we start to advance and start to collaborate at a more national level, you know, not just other organizations, but even other funding entities that we might not have thought about, you know, engaging with in the past. And so being able to sort of, sort of navigate that, help lead people towards that and help them understand how this kind of new funding source is really going to elevate the society. That's another key aspect here. And that actually comes with, you know, lots of leadership experience. And so, you know, I think for somebody coming into SACNAS and the board of directors, bringing in sort of a, hierarchy of leadership skills, both from really small scales to large scales, it's going to be an essential skill set that somebody would need to bring to the board. Okay, thank you. So, I, I get to talk about diversity and, and diversity um, is a big part of what SACNAS is founded upon, but but divor diversity is um, something that really is important, not just in terms of skill sets, not just in terms of your discipline, not just in terms of where you teach or where you work. We also want diversity in terms of um, the, whether you're academic or industry or policy, we're seeking people from all different kinds of backgrounds, all different kinds of experience, all different kinds of ethnicities, um, and all different kinds of um, experience with respect to being able to gather funds together for the organization. Because of the challenging times right now with, with the uh, budgetary constraints uh, throughout the United States, uh, it's important that we have people with really diverse skill sets. And even though um, we may be uncomfortable, for instance, I'm a, a cell glycobiologist, and um, sometimes it might be difficult for me to talk to a, phys a physicist or to a mathematician, but nonetheless, in order for me to truly understand what I want to study, I need to be able to talk to these people because they will help me understand what I study more. And, and just like, just as that example, as an organization, we need to be multidisciplinary. We need to be able to talk not only within our own discipline and within our own groups, but but between groups and between um, disciplines, we want to make sure that people from industry, academia, different ethnicities, backgrounds, different orientations, all of that, that whoever is, um, has had the experience and has the desire and has the, the will and the time that you apply because we need to really make our organization as diverse as possible so that we can become a, a real power to be reckoned with as far as science is concerned. Um, one of the places that has recognized the importance of diversity with any organization or within a company is um, the Harvard Business Review. And one of the things they say is that um, focusing on potential gains um, and having a more diverse board, such as diversity of thought, of comprehension of understanding, of customer base and our customers are not just 
our students and the people that we work with, but also the people who use our science. Um, and um, we want to reduce groupthink. We want, we want people to come in and challenge what we think. We want to encourage more intentional um, board diversity. And we want to focus on taking calculated risks and also maintaining enough of the status quo, but we also want to make sure that all our members have a say in what goes on. So true diversity a lot of times does cause some un uncomfortableness, but that's also part of what makes an organization great. And so we really want to make sure that anyone who feels that they're um, capable and have the experience and come from some background that that up until recently has not really been part uh, of the board of directors that you apply and that you run for, for um, a spot as the board of directors. So we really want to see a more diverse board, not just with respect to discipline, not just with, with respect to your ethnic or racial background, but also a difference of thought and perspective because that's what makes organizations great. So we really want to see that. So hopefully we'll see a lot more. And, and by the way, we already have applications in, and this is wonderful. One of them is from a government organization, and so that makes us quite happy. Next, we're going to talk about financial contributions and expectations. So, um, in the last two years, the board and the officers have implemented a policy called board giving policy, partly due to the cost saving initiative during a very tight budget period. Um, second, we learned that certain grant foundations expect, uh, expect nonprofits that apply for their funds to demonstrate that 100% of the board members contribute or, do or, or donate to the organization. Um, SACNIS has outlined four potential means to donate, and I'll just go over that real quickly. Number one, you can do a direct deposit to the organization, a direct donation to the organization. Uh, two, you can gift a life membership to someone. Uh, three, you can pay um, in full or part for your travel to a board meeting or the annual conference. And four, um, you can pay or, or donate to other board activities that come up throughout the year. Now, at first, this policy may appear daunting, but um, let me just give you um, an example for myself from the last year. Four events happened that afforded me the opportunity to uh, donate. Um, first of all, have you been on the sacnes.org website lately. Well, last year, they implemented something new. At the top right-hand corner is this nice yellow button, and it says donate. So I was curious, when they first popped up on, on the webpage, I said, well, let me, let me check it out. I want to see how easy it would be for me to donate online. So I clicked on it, and it was very easy to use. It's very friendly. Um, one part, I liked that the um, amount options were, were offered. You can donate one time, you can donate monthly, quarterly, or yearly. So I chose a quarterly uh, um, process, and so far, so good. Um, I don't forget to donate, so that's good. Um, there's also a special option to donate to Sockness um, in honor of someone or in memory of someone who has made a difference in your life and your career. And I, I think that's a really special um, um, option to donate. And, I've had so many great mentors through um, my association with Sockness. I'm, I'm considering that as a, as a future um, means for me to donate. Now, uh, I'll give you a couple of, uh, another example. I'm an alum, as similar to Nancy, with the um, Linton Pudry Sockness Leadership Institute, the SLI. And last year, the, the group bought a table at the annual conference, so I had an opportunity to donate to the cost of that table at, in the exhibit hall. I'm also on the Native American Affairs Committee, and we hosted the movie night last year, and we really wanted to bring in two elders that were instrumental in the production of this movie. And so I was able to contribute some funds to get those um, elders to, our, to the conference and really to stimulate conversation and, and dialogue after the movie. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then another way you, you can pay for your, your attending the board, men, um, board meetings, perhaps partially. And this, this partial part I'm talking about could be airfare, hotel, could be some of the food that's not covered by um, the organization or registration at the conference. Anyway, these are just a few examples um, of ways board members may donate to the organization. And I would just suggest you find a means that's comfortable for you and your situation. 
And now um, I'd like to just real briefly um, topic of level of um, time commitment to, to being on the board of directors. You know, in the past, back in 2003, I thought the board had a lot, had some say in more decision making of the day to day operations. Well, that's not necessary today. Um, we have a, a very um, competent management um, leader in our executive director and the uh, leadership of the core staff um, and their skills is, is just incredible. So the board doesn't have to do that. We, we focus on policy. We, we focus on um, implementing the strategic plans, our fiduciary, re, fiduciary responsibilities, and just making sure this, the organization goes forward. Um, other things about time commitment, as mentioned before by other um, panelists, you know, we all serve on various committees. We may chair the committee. Um, sometimes throughout the year, we'll be, we'll be asked to join us a, a task force um, and, and add some you know, additional time on, on, uh, on another committee and by invitation of the president or the officers. So that may come up. Um, I can tell you that my time management skills have improved. Uh, we, with the monthly conference calls and, and other duties, I, I really had to learn how to manage all that and, and continue to be a, a viable faculty member and mentor at the University of Hawaii. So um, that's my thoughts about time and commitment to the organization. Thanks. Thank you. So um, I only want to add a few things about this because uh, Dr. Chang really covered a lot of, of uh, most of actually what, what um, is expected here of, for board members regarding financial contributions and, and the, the expectations. Um, one thing that's really important and uh, sometimes it can it can just happen by accident. Um, uh, don't forget, if you're not a lifetime member to register every year, to um, um, pay for your membership every year. Um, we actually had one year have someone forget to do that and they applied to run for the board of directors. And well, you know, the, one, of the, one of the criteria is that you are a member, a current member, a paid member. So don't forget that. Um, I haven't seen it, I've only seen it once. Uh, and the other thing is that um, more and more because of the changing uh, financial constraints within our, our country, um, foundations and other financial organizations that do contribute to nonprofits are expecting certain kinds of contributions with unrestrict, um, in unrestricted funds from board of directors, the members of the board of directors. And so We've mentioned it before. We just want to make sure that, that that's understood. But as you could see, and as Dr. Chang told you, um, there are numerous ways to make that kind of a contribution. So thank you. All right, let's see what we're, where we're going to next. Um, oh, okay, so now we're gonna shift gears just a little bit and we're gonna talk about speaking from experience. So we're gonna hear from someone who's a new board member this year and we're gonna hear about what he's experienced so far. And he's gonna talk about the skill sets also that he feels are important for you to have, or um, at least for him, to have as a new board member for SACNAS. Um, if, Dr. Garza? Yeah, sure, uh, thank you. Happy to speak about my experience as a new board member. Uh, yeah, I think one of the big parts was just kind of understanding or really learning um, you know, in a sense how the board has to take the thousand foot view of the society, so much as opposed to really getting into the weeds of the day-to-day -day activities, which, you know, might be a challenge for some individuals. So, you know, being able to come in and being okay with letting the society run day-to-day -day on its own and really be able to kind of take a step back and look at the bigger picture, you know, that's kind of a big skill that you have to bring, you know, into, into being a new board member and sort of recognizing that. You know, the other one, the other thing that I think is a really important skill is being okay with, um, listening and not talking so much so you can really kind of get a sense of sort of you know the history of why things are the way they are you know why things have operated in a certain way and why you know things are why they are today right you now because i think before you want to start to make you know contributions as a new board member even though it can be tempting to say show how much you might know right off the bat uh, it's really important to kind of get the context for why things have sort of progressed in the way they have and if you want to think about you know making shifts in the society or changing ways the things are going, you'll have, I think it'd be more informed that way. I think being willing to, to listen and learn for a little bit is, is a really key activity in there. 
you know, but also on the flip side of that, it's, you know, also not being afraid to try to contribute where your input might actually be valuable in that, in that case, you know, so really recognizing, you know, those points, you know, in a conversation where your new sort of perspective might actually help push a conversation forward, you know, that's going to actually be a really useful uh, skill set. And then, you know, the reality is, you know, this is adding on time. Helani talked about it a little bit. It's, you know, this is another time commitment that you're making. And, you know, many people, you know, you only have so many hours in the day, you know, I, I'm the same way as well. Um, you know, coming in with some uh, time management skills is actually going to be pretty important because it can be over, it can be easy to overcommit yourself, you know, just to try to add activities to what you're doing, but you're not really doing yourself or the board much good if you're so overcommitted that you can't contribute in sort of a really impactful way. And so really being able to manage your time um, is going to be a good one as well. But I think those are kind of some of the key things, you know, as a new board member, you know, that I've sort of experienced and I think, you know, new board members, you know, want to keep in mind, you know, if they're thinking for one running, you know, for the board and ultimately, you know, if they get elected, you know, accepting that, that election to the board. Okay, thank you. And um, now we're going to hear from uh, Daniel about his experience um, and his perspective uh, as a student board member. So I think a big part of when you come on, uh, you know, I would like to you know, sort of second what Corey said about, you know, you sort of have to listen. You have to understand that one, there's, there's a lot of staff members and, you know, more tenured board members that have a huge historical perspective that gives you a lot of, um, well, I guess exactly that. I mean, it gives you just perspective on exactly how things that like certain problems that Sockness is handling now have probably been handled in the past. And if they haven't, you know, it gives you perspective on how to um, handle these sort of things going forward. Like what are the strategies? What has been tried? What hasn't been tried? Um, you know, why weren't certain things tried? Uh, so I think, you know, listening, being able to listen and then also give your own perspective it's sort of a balance that you have to find as yourself. I think one of the biggest skill sets that has helped me um, got coming in and then just throughout serving on the board for the past, you know, sort of 18 months almost um, has been uh, being able to receive and then also give constructive feedback, um, especially to, you know, the president or even, you know, some of the other more tenured board members that have been helping make decisions for the past, you know, one to two consecutive years um i think that that helps so much and especially you know at the in-person board meetings uh you really get a feel i mean nonverbal communication is so big but you're able to um communicate effectively and i think that that's that's such a big important thing um i think another skill that i would say is um grant writing I mean, not even if you're not specifically working on a grant for SACNAS as the organization, I think the ability to really have that sort of stamina and critical eye to be able to look over, you know, page after page or document after document, whether we're reviewing, you know, you know, edits to the bylaws or to budgets, I think being able to have that experience and that stamina uh, to look at those things is very important as well. Um, and yeah, and just the ability to uh, be able to sort of know when to jump in and share what you're thinking. Um, and sort of one more thing I would add is sort of the have a desire to prepare. Um, sort of have that, that drive to be able to prepare and look over documents beforehand. That way you are prepared and that way you do have input on things and you have questions and you're able to sort of challenge the direction that the organization is going and to make sure that we've done our homework as a board, as a whole, before we make big decisions. And with that, I will stop. Uh, I, I think um, you've touched on something that was really important for me to learn um, when I first started as a board of directors, a uh, member of the board of directors was to really prepare, really read and make sure that when I, was, when I was there with the rest of the board of directors, I could contribute because I had done all the background reading and um, I was able to contribute successfully. 
One of the things I want to mention before I turn it over to Dr. Chang about her experience, which we really want to hear about because she served at two different times when the organization was a little bit less mature and now that it's, it's heading into the next phase of, of what it's going through. But um, one of the things that we did when, when I was on the board of directors is we actually had, it was, a, it was in the form of a game. It was the history of SACNAS. And we got to learn through the, who all the presidents were and what, what the going, what the main um, focus was during that presidency. And from that, we were able to learn what the organization went through for every single one of those presidencies. And that made a huge difference in my understanding of where the organization has been and, what, and the direction it was heading. And um, I think that's a wonderful thing. And maybe we can encourage the, the um, or whoever is in power that they do that every so often, maybe every, every third or fourth uh, round of board of directors um, elections or something. I don't know. But anyway, all right. Um, so next, as I said, I, I'm really looking forward to hearing um, from Dr. Chang about speaking from experience because she's, she's served at two different times on the SACNAS Board of Directors. So if you could please tell us about your experience. Uh, sure. I'll talk about being a board member. First of all, um, I just want to say I'm going to repeat a lot of things that Daniel and, and Dr. Garza had already said. I'll try not to, but it was really important. And, and also, Nancy, all of, all of what you just shared are points that I had put down in my notes here to, to make sure I cover. Certainly, the historical part is, is true. I've, been, um, I've served through several different presidents, and the leadership style has changed. And, and you know, so I, I, can, I carry that forward to the current board, board of directors. Um, years of volunteer service to the organization also contributes to being a, a well-informed board member. I guess I would say I, I depend, I rely upon my, my cultural values as, as uh, my guide or my principles to follow. And, and core values, and this is, everyone has these, but I'll just mention a couple. Responsibility or, or to be responsible for, as, as you already heard, you know, we, we carry out our strategic goals, we ensure that the organization is financially sound, and we have to be prepared for our meetings. Um, I like and I enjoy raising awareness about SACNAS across my various networks and making others aware of the potential contributions our members are capable of across the scientific workforce. Um, all of us have had this. I didn't realize that when I was putting together my packet for, for the nomination packet for last, the, the last year, um, I just started listing things. I was an abstract reviewer, a judge at the annual conference, a panelist for the professional development. All of those contribute to your knowledge and your wealth of experience that you can contribute to the board. So, you know, keep track of all of that. Being a SLI alum, um, chairing, you know, various committees, um, being a chapter advisor, all of that, and hosting a regional meeting in, in your area, all that contributes to your strength and what you bring to the table as, as a board member. Um, let's see. Um, I, I wrote down listening skills too. Um, you're totally right, Dr. Garza. We have to have these listening skills, be able to hear what other people are saying. And at, you know, sometimes hearing all sides of a topic or concern and a willingness to rethink my own viewpoint if another one um, best advances the strategy or the outcomes that we're, we're working towards for the whole organization. I found it very rewarding to perform community service. I believe we, we live in a global society and you know, personal experiences make us a stronger board member. So be, willing, you know, be, be open to sharing and listening and, and, and just you know, being excited about serving and, and being a voice for this national organization. But above all, above all, respect one another. I think that's what all of us believe in. Um, the last core value I want to just mention briefly is giving back. I have personally gained so many positive benefits from my association with softness. I, I have the confidence as a leader to, to serve and share what I've learned with students, staff, and colleagues. So there's so many benefits that you can gain from, from putting yourself out there at the national level. So good luck to all of you who submit no nomination packets. Thank you. And um, I know what happened here. Uh, we were supposed to have another um, panelist and she was not able to make it today. That was Dr. 
um, Erica Camacho. And so somehow we, we got that mixed in, but, um, but if you have a question for her, you, you'll get her contact information in just a moment. But one of the things that you mentioned um, about your experience and all the things that you've done is that you find that you have a long list of all these things you've done within the organization and um, these committees that you've served on, the either local or district or national things that you've done within the organization. And one time I was going over with a, um, an advisor on my on my resume for um, because I'm, I'm going to be uh, pretty soon I'm going to be looking for something and uh, another position and she said this organization that you belong to you really care about this organization don't you and I said well yeah I pretty much love the mission that we have here because I really want to see diversity in science in stem in all forms of stem so yes I really do and I, I think that um, most of us who belong to the organization and who choose to serve at this level, we really do care about not just the organization, but the mission and the people who are part of it. And I think that's one of the things that most of the board of directors, the members who become board of directors, uh, they share that, that quality. So thank you. Uh, let's see what we, what we have next. Ah, okay, so the, the application process. Let me tell you a little bit about the application process. Um, so um, before submitting your application, make sure that you review the, import, the information about the uh, board responsibilities and the expectations. You've heard about some of it here today, but you can actually go and find those documents and review them yourself. Also review the giving uh, policy if it was less than clear or if you still had questions about it. Again, you will be getting our contact information if you want to contact us about specific questions and how to strengthen your application. It's just like anything else. If you are applying for a position, a job somewhere, you wanna make sure that you put your best foot forward, that you don't have typos, that everything is accurate. You have someone go over your application with you um, and you check it and check it again and then check it one more time. You really, if, if you want to be part of this process and you want to um, contribute to the organization, you really wanna put your best foot forward. So just treat it like you would if you were applying to a, a job for pay. Um, definitely just put your best foot forward. All right, uh, let's see here now. Okay, ah, board elections. Um, I'm gonna ask um, Marilu to please talk about this part of it. My pleasure, yes. Uh, so SACNA has created uh, some campaigning guidelines um, to provide some direction to nominated candidates in terms of what is and what is not allowed in the SAGNA selections. And once, um, once candidates are notified, uh, if they made the, the, the slate, uh, they will receive these, gui these guidelines. And it's just to ensure that there is parity across the entire uh, process. Um, and so, um, the voting period starts uh, at the SACNAS National Conference the first day, which is October 11th this year. Um, and we, ha we have, um, we will have the meet the candidates session uh, where candidates will have the opportunity to talk about themselves and why they, um, they wanna be on the SACNAS Board of Directors. Um, and that we're looking at Friday, October 12th, uh, sometime in the afternoon, or actually the time still to be determined. Um, but we will be letting candidates know um, as soon as they're, uh, you know, they're not, uh, selected for the slate. Um, and the voting uh, period goes from uh, October 11th through um, November 16, and um, and that's when uh, campaigning is allowed. Uh, once um, the voting period is over, uh, candidates will be, will be notified within uh, within a week or so of the uh, results. And um, are there any? I think that's all. Yeah, and uh, the general membership is notified in, is it early December? That's, that's correct. All right, so this entire process, um, 
uh, is uh, culminates with the, the new board members that are elected and the announcement that's made. Um, and we, we hope that you consider applying for this. Um, if you are in a place in your career and, um, and you have the time uh, and you have skill sets that you can contribute to the organization, we really hope that you consider this. And uh, Marilu, I believe that we have a set of questions um, that were submitted prior to the webinar. Um, would you mind beginning the, um, with the questions and any of the panelists who feel that they could um, respond to the question, please feel free to go ahead and respond. Yes, uh, so the, the first question that I have for the panelists is, uh, or actually that, that was submitted by, um, by a SACMAS uh, member uh, that was interested in running for the board, possibly, is uh, what qualities do you feel a board member should have that you did not expect prior to your tenure? I can offer one in one word, speed reading. <laughs> I can I can take one. So one that I didn't expect to have as much was sort of a relative like well versed in current events and exactly how it affects diversity. So sort of sort of communication skills uh, for the organization. Organizational communication skills is a big one that I did not expect to have to build and have. Um, I have a question for you, a uh, follow-up question with that. Um, in the communications department for SACNAS, do they, they do hold some, uh, don't they have a, a bank of um, information for the board members to have uh, so that there's a, a common um, voice or a common set of answers that the board members give whenever they're asked about it and some sort of training like that? Yeah, there, there, there is. A, there's a more general sort of guideline, you know, for things like social media. And, you know, a lot of it is, is encouraging, um, you know, if you, if you have a student or a mentee um, that, you know, accomplishes something great as a SACNista and you want to promote that and things like that. A lot of it is, positive messaging um, to sort of promote what we're about and really, you know, where our passions come from. Um, but then there's also sort of things like um, if we are asked directly about a current event, uh, whether it be, you know, something our current president said or um, a current piece of legislation that has been passed, um, there are more specific responses to those things. And I think that that's more, um, relevant at the time of the conference because we have a board meeting right before um, the national conference every year. So um, so if I understand correctly, it's also not just staying um, abreast of current events, but also policy and and the single voice that the board needs to, to um, speak with for the right. organization. Okay. All right. Great. Um, so I'll, I'll start with the next question. Um, what do you feel are currently the most crucial issues for the board and the organization? And anyone who wants to fundraising and, and you know grant writing, um, and you know not all fundraising is tied to grant writing, but I think that's just where our minds tend to go as scientists. It's, you know, serve the organization. Um, but that's I would say that you know sort of growth is going to require substantial funds and I think that that's true of pretty much any nonprofit that isn't um, you know Susan G Komen or these massive ones you know so I think that's a big one yeah and I think following up on that you know beyond the, the funding not just thinking about the funding models but the messaging we use and sort of how we also think to market ourselves out to a broader community. One of the challenges that we've, you know, we've highlighted is, you know, our students tend to be sort of aggregated in one, one or two very specific disciplines. And so it limits sort of the audience that we're reaching. And so, you know, we have to really start to think about, you know, the messaging that we use, how we deploy it, and who are the audiences that we're trying to reach. And so that's going to be a big challenge for us going forward. Okay. 
Uh, Marilu, do you have a, another question? Yes, this is a two-part question. Um, it says, how much travel is involved? And is it profession friendly and maybe parent friendly as well? I can repeat it. It says, how much travel is involved? Is it profession friendly and maybe parent friendly? So I can, I can take some of that. Um, so for the travel, uh, you travel, we have three in-person board meetings. Um, and if for any reason um, board members cannot make those travel dates, uh, we're pretty flexible. I mean, we've had people participate uh, just fine over video conferencing. And, you know, it's essentially you just have the camera over the boardroom where the people that are meeting in person, you see everybody, you know. And so um, I'd say that there's minor drawbacks to that, but uh, that works. And... I would say, yes, it's profession friendly, but with the caveat that it definitely takes, you know, Halani sort of touched on this earlier about uh, your <laughs> ability to manage your time as a board member, you know, it sort of develops and it really grows through the roof um, just through serving and just, you know, within your first few months, you realize it, it's a necessity to, to be able to do that. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's definitely profession friendly, but uh, it does take some work and, and commitment on your part to uh, sort of meet in the middle, I guess, is the best way to put it. Because it is, you know, it takes time, but you're serving because you want to serve the organization and give back. Um, as far as parent friendly, I know that we have several um, parents on the board that are very active. Um, I'm not a parent myself, but, um, like, I don't know if I could exactly say that it's parent friendly, but uh, I know that if we had children at a board meeting, I mean, I think we would handle it very well. I mean, we treat each other like family as is. So I think that would be great. Yeah, the um, year that I was uh, on, Talithia Williams had um, had a son that year. And um, between her husband and her son being there, um, the son would be not necessarily in the meeting, but he'd be at some of the events and we would all take turns helping take care of him. And it was a pleasure to have him there. See, I don't know that I could say that for all babies or all children, but um, at that time it worked. So, okay. Um, we only have a few minutes left. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. Um, how is it that graduate students are members of the board of directors and what role do they actually play in SACNAS? Okay, so, um, well, I guess to the first part is how is it that, that they are? I mean, I think that it would be it would be tough definitely to serve on the board of directors if you were, um, you know, within your first year of graduate studies because there's just so much, you know, a lot, a lot of graduate programs require qualifying exams uh, during the first year and you have a heavy course load your first year. Um, I know a lot of graduate students are adjusting to teaching, so I think that would be tough, but I think the way that it'll work is, it, you know, after you get through most of your required coursework as a graduate student, as a PhD student, uh, you do have some extra time and you just, ideally throughout graduate school, you grow as a scientist and you become a lot more efficient at doing experiments. And so I think that that's a big part of it. Um, and our role on the board is to be full board members, but also with an additional sort of perspective on graduate student members. I mean, so we are required to um, really listen to our student membership and especially, you know, that goes listening to other graduate students, um, listening to the professionals, but also the undergraduates as well. Um, and the sort of things like, one of the things that got brought up last year is that, you know, student members can only vote for other student board members and they want to know why they cannot vote for SACNAS president. Um, and so that was something that was actually brought up at the last conference in Utah um, to the other graduate student board member and myself. And, you know, we've brought that to the board and we've gotten some things in motion um, to potentially have, a, you know, student members be able to vote for president in the future. I think that's important. And the other thing, I think the, the rule of thumb, it's not actually written anywhere, at least not that I know of, 
is that once a student, a graduate student gets past their qualifying exams, that's usually a good time. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I've heard. Yeah. So um, uh, I think we'll move to the last question because um, this is a, a question that I, I'm sure a lot of people have who are possibly interested in applying for nominations. And Marilu, can you um, get that last question? Yes, the last question is, if awarded as a general member or if elected as a general member or graduate member, do you get an advisor for, uh, for guidance on the board? Yes. <laughs> you get more than one. <laughs> All helpful, right? Yes. <laughs> Okay. I'll just add. I'll just add something. Um, they have, in the last two years, implemented a sort of mentor um, a role for an existing board member to mentor a new incoming uh, board member. And and I I've, I've done that. I had a mentor when I first came on, and I'm a mentor this year to one of the the new board members. And I think that's worked out pretty well. We've been able to discuss a few things that I wasn't thinking about from her perspective. So um, we, we were able to bring it up and, and I think we'll move forward with that, with the, the full board. So it does work and then we have something in place. Do they um, try to pair you up with somebody who's not from your discipline also? Um, I'm just curious. Yeah, nobody's from my discipline. <laughs> so yes, yes. Or, or Corey either, right? <laughs> so, all right. Um, any last comments? Um, Okay, so if you're interested in contacting any one of us, um, you'll see our contact information here on the screen. Uh, and you can uh, feel free to write to us, or you can go to the SOCNUS website and find the general information, contact information there to write to someone um, at the organization itself. Um, but I want to thank the um, panelists who spent their time with us today and answered questions about their experience and what they've done and what they found satisfying and what they think uh, about serving on the board. Thank you so much to all of you. And thank you, Marilu, for being part of this. And um, thank, you. thank you. We hope that if you feel that you have the time and the skill set and um, the ability that you consider running for the SACNAS Board of Directors. Uh, thank you and have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.